This program is rated GE. Content carried in here is suitable for general family viewing. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting, interesting episode of Law Matters. Remember, Law Matters is an educative, informative, and a legal aid clinic on television. This is a quality show you don't want to miss because this is where we give you the information you need to know how to negotiate those uh, difficult issues that have to do with the law. Tonight, as always, remember we are on our social media platforms at KUTV Kenya on Facebook and at KUTV Kenya Live on YouTube and KUTV underscore Kenya on Twitter. Tonight we are talking about the law connected with one of the grand documents that we use in this country to know how to run our lives. And we have today an expert on constitutional law. I'm talking about the Constitution. We'll get to know all about that. I am your host, Dr. Ngugi Kingara. And I want to welcome my guest uh, to the show mm -hmm. and ask her to introduce herself before we get uh, down to business. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. My name is Miss Catherine Irumbi. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I'm also a lecturer at Kenyatta University School of Law, very where good. I also teach constitutional law. Okay, yes. very good. Well, you're interested in the Constitution. Yes, Why, why yes. are you interested in the Constitution beyond the obvious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because it's the foundation of all laws in this country. Mm -hmm. And so for any law to be made in this country, it has to reflect mm -hmm. um, the wishes of the people and yes. the wishes are well outlined in the Constitution. And I think we did a, a very good background, first of all, talking about laws. But now we are reframing things and yes. we want to show people or a viewer where laws come from, really, mm -hmm. and how that document is connected to the law. And I think we should start at the very um, basic level of understanding this document, because mm -hmm. we know when we've heard about the Constitution is probably from people who also have their own interests, their particular political ones. Yes. But some of us who are lay people need to know what is the Constitution before you even talk constitutional law? Mm -hmm. How do you define the Constitution? The Constitution, in very simple terms, is the fundamental law of any nation that sets out clearly how its government is run mm -hmm. and lays out its powers as well as functions and the limits within which it has to work under. Okay, so then uh, I think at that point they know it's probably just like the way you would want to have your Bible. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> it's the other Bible. Yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Okay, I think we can put it that way. Yes. So then, mm -hmm. constitutional law now. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what law is, what is that, uh, if you were to give a definition of what constitutional law is? Now, constitutional law now embodies the body of laws mm -hmm. that now clearly will set out mm -hmm. what the government is supposed to do yes. in the form of statutes um, uh, that clearly uh, give the mandate to specific arms of government mm -hmm. and also outline clearly how they are supposed to function and also give clearly their powers um, and also the limits because we have to limit authority mm, yes. because as we say um, uh, excess power can be abused yes. and more so in matters governance so um, it has to be limited so the laws those body of laws are what we call constitutional law okay and then the foundation mm. of that uh, I, I imagine or the basic principle of having a constitution mm. is what um, uh, the basic um, reason why we have the constitution in the first place mm -hmm. is because we have to centralize power in the sense mm -hmm. that it cannot be given to one person mm -hmm. and since it emanates from the people of this country yes. and um, the fact that we cannot all be in governance, we cannot all be in parliament or in the executive arm of government so mm -hmm. we have to transfer our power to um, the government in the sense of the three arms of government to now take care of the power that we, the people of Kenya, have. Okay. That's the basic um, reason why we have the constitution. And 
I hear there when you when you say our, uh, you know, you're the, you're I, okay. the, the people. Yes. So where, where is the public in all this? I mean, uh, well, how does the constitution and the people? I know you've put it well because mm. there cannot be a government without mm. the governed, mm. so to speak. But where mm. is the public in the making of the constitution, for example? Mm -hmm. Very well. In fact, the constitution is very clear right from the preamble, mm -hmm. in that we give the constitution to ourselves. Um, it takes care of our aspirations. It takes care of our needs. Is the so it's a social contract we have with the government and um, under Article 1 of the Constitution that mm -hmm. clearly outlines the sovereignty of the people, it vests all the power in all the mandate in mm -hmm. the people of this country. Yes. So us getting to understand that and um, knowing that we, we actually have the power to determine what happens um, in our very communities is the reason why um, Kenya has one of the most progressive constitutions in the world. Okay, yes. so uh, I'm, I'm guessing now people are hearing you are allowed to participate in the formation of this. So it's not about people in Nairobi, you know, like yes. <laughs> how we hear True. people in Nairobi made the document. True. So what is the, the approach to doing that for the public? Mm. Uh, the mm. public, well, I think here I'm talking public participation mm. now in this constitutional process of making and other things that we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Article 1 has defined ways in which we can participate. Mm -hmm. One is directly where you can vie as a yes. candidate. Mm -hmm. We also um, uh, get to vote yeah, you cast that vote that is direct exercise of your sovereignty, direct democracy. Mm -hmm. um, the other way is indirect democracy yes. um, through elected representatives, those that we elect for example members of parliament mm -hmm. members of county assemblies that is the MCA um, so in that sense we exercise our democracy indirectly Okay. Yes. And so now these um, sovereign powers, maybe we, I think we can highlight that. What does that mean? Because we hear that mm -hmm. a lot, so that the mm -hmm. public, in lay persons' mm -hmm. terms, uh, if you were to, to say it, mm -hmm. so that they hear that. Yes. Uh, how can you rephrase that? Mm -hmm. Sovereignty comes from the term supreme, mm -hmm. that we hold power. All power that is vested in the government is derived from us. Mm. In fact, when you look at the Constitution, Article 94, yes. which gives legislative authority, mm -hmm. clearly says that the legislative authority given to Parliament is first derived from us, mm. um, more so because we also elect the members of Parliament. Right. When you look at Article 129, it defines clearly executive mm. authority, yes. executive authority that we vest in um, the office of the president. Mm. It, it is derived from us, seeing that we also participate in electing the president. Yes. Lastly, we have Article 159 that gives us the authority of the judiciary, um, the judges that we see um, every other day, the mm. magistrates, yes. whatever power they exercise is from us. So it means we are supreme, that they cannot function if we are mm. not there. They yes. cannot function without the power we give them. So that is why we are supreme, we are mm. sovereign, yes. Okay. Now, the, uh, you said something at the beginning there, um, decentralization of mm. power. Mm. And when I hear that, most of us associate it with the formation of um, county governments. Mm. Uh, and the big word there mm. is devolution. Mm. I think there is devolution of the constitution and there's mm. devolution of seats of government. Maybe you can explain. This, where mm. does devolution come in in this? Mm -hmm. Now, devolution is also a way in which we get to participate as the public. Yes. Reason being devolution is decentralization of power, mm -hmm. such that power is no longer concentrated in the National Assembly, mm -hmm. yes. is no longer uh, concentrated in the national government, mm -hmm. that now it gets closer to the people yes. through the counties, through the sub-counties, through the ward, mm -hmm. through the villages. And in that sense, we get to participate in also election those members of the devolved government yes. um, right from the governor um, the MCAs that we also elect um, um, in that sense to take care of matters closer to us as opposed to what we were used to we all had to come to Nairobi you know for certain mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. now with devolution that has been decentralized mm -hmm. uh, various state organs have now been decentralized 
um, to various um, counties, make it, uh, making it easier for us to access um, services. So that is why devolution is part of exercising our sovereignty. It is part of bringing governance closer to us. Okay. Yes. Now, the, when one cannot help but hear when you're talking about um, mm -hmm. having different places away from the headquarters in yes. Nairobi. Yes. It requires money. Yes. Does the public have any say so uh, mm -hmm. in, in how this money is spent in, the, in these places to, so that mm -hmm. devolved governments can function? Mm -hmm. Yes, the public must be involved more so in budgeting. And we see even at the county level, we have the county budgeting mm -hmm. and economic forum yes. that um, allows the public to now be involved in the budgeting process such that they can air out um, uh, issues that they might have Mm. that need to be addressed and in that sense even in resource allocation that is even made possible once we know what are the issues what resources we have and how to budget uh, with what we already have and then that uh, i guess get back to the question do, mm. do we have a way of knowing how much when we said we participate we wanted this much money to be put in health and this much money on, uh, on roads mm -hmm. uh, how do we get to know that money was is there, is yes. In that yes. As well? yes, we do. In fact, mm -hmm. we have a right under Article 35 mm -hmm. that gives us the right to access information. So any information that is there in, the, in any state organ in this country, mm -hmm. and this is something I would want the viewers to know, mm -hmm. in that you have right to access information in that you can request for information. So if you wanted to know how much mm. we have, how much has been used for what, you yes. have that right um, to demand, um, if I may use that word, to access that information mm. because it is a right that has been set out very clearly under the Constitution. Mm, oh, interesting. Yes. So you know you have a right. But yes. then someone is asking, oh, mm. me just sitting here at home, I can mm. just go to mm. wherever and, and get those there must be a procedure and yes. tools that facilitate that mm. to happen mm. which ones are these that no. allow that participation public mm -hmm. participation to happen mm -hmm. smoothly mm -hmm. very good one is petitions um, in petitions we see them every other day in, mm -hmm. in um, social media where we have friends sharing with us petitions mm -hmm. um, the most recent one was with the Boda Boda mm -hmm. and the new uh, the need for regulations in yes. the sense that we had to petition Mm. Yeah, in a sense to um, give an opinion as the public in the sense of what we want to happen. Mm. So petitions is one of those ways. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go to the county government toolkit, mm -hmm. it already has a template that you can mm. use. It has made it even easier, mm. such that you don't have to think about drafting petitions mm. and all that. It's already there. So you just fill it and, and mm. that's it. You disseminate it through social media and um, that's it. Another way is through memorandum. Okay. Memorandum is sort of a research that you do but it is quite brief in the sense that you set out clearly what you want mm. and in that you set out say for example um, areas you don't amended um, in the sense of policies or even laws and the best thing also is that the toolkit that has been given has a template mm -hmm. that you can use now those are the major ways mm. now the other way in which the public participates and the tool they can use mm. is complaints filing okay. complaints okay. now this is even easier because you mm -hmm. can call that is okay. one way yes. um, you can write a letter you can go there physically mm -hmm. um, to lodge a complaint in that mm -hmm. you feel something is going wrong so you have that authority mm -hmm. um, to go to the um, that particular county yeah. or even that body and even complain and then they're supposed to give you feedback Mm -hmm. in the sense that how long um, should I take, for example, to get feedback. Mm -hmm. If that, if all these methods fail, yes. again, the Constitution has provided for us, and in fact it's a guarantor of rights, mm -hmm. in that if all these methods fail, yes. we can go to the courts, we can petition mm -hmm. the courts. Article 2, in mm -hmm. fact, goes ahead and says, every person in this country can institute court proceedings mm. where they feel their rights are being violated. So there are so many avenues that we can use. Um, and in fact, if we knew where to go, I think um, we would participate mm. much better in matters democracy. 
Now, what about the uh, barazas and forums? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. those are types of things that, um, d during my background checks on what you know goes into participation, how yes. is that related to what you just said as a tool? Mm -hmm. Now, public barazas are what happens, and especially if it is something recent and you need immediate feedback mm -hmm. um, from the public, so you hold barazas. They are quicker means mm -hmm. of getting information from the public concerning a particular mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. If also you need, say for example, in formulation of laws affecting a particular sector, yes. you can have forums that are specifically designed for particular sectors, be it aviation. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can have forums that of course bring in the stakeholders. Yes. Stakeholders meaning those who are affected, those who are mm -hmm. in the aviation industry. Yes. Um, most of us are affected and especially those who um, use um, air travel. Mm. So again, this is another way in which we can have those public forums yes. um, that are, of course, um, created, and especially with a certain intention, um, also from um, uh, getting the feedback from the public. And remember, mm -hmm. it is very important for us to have public participation, more so when we are making laws. In fact, if you make laws without public participation, mm. they will be declared unconstitutional. Why? Because there is a procedural flaw. Mm -hmm. Public participation is part of the lawmaking process. So in fact, as much as it is a right, it is a duty that we owe mm. this good country. Yes. yes. And then I'm, I'm sure there are steps that one has to follow, for instance, uh, participation through forums. Mm. Uh, which ones are these? If you can just touch on those <laughs> the you know, top ones before we go on a break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The various forums, for example, um, matters budgeting, because that is a, mm -hmm. an area that touches all of us. Yes. Um, county, at the county level, you have the um, county um, uh, budget and economic forums that actually prepare these forums. And in fact, one way in which they do that is they disseminate information. Mm -hmm. They create what we call public awareness, okay. in the sense that if you are to hold a meeting, say, in two weeks time um, the public gets to know mm -hmm. they get to also know the venue mm -hmm. what is expected of them right. and it makes it even easier and especially if it is an issue that touches on the public yes. um, let me give an example of educational matters yes. um, say for example the CBC mm -hmm. this was a process that really um, involved us in mm -hmm. a sense of getting our views as parents as um, um, stakeholders in the um, in that sector yes. so again that that is the best forum in the sense of um, availing public participation where you get the views from the public, you get the feedback, you get their concerns. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, if you're drafting any legislation that is going to be effectively implemented, you have to make sure it reflects the views mm -hmm. of the public because it makes it easier to even implement and for those who it affects to carry out their rights as well as their duties. Okay, very mm. informative. I think mm. we'll leave it there for the steps and then yes. when we come back, we yes. will pick up on those steps because I think they're very important. This yes. is a real thing people have to do and they need to know how to go about it. True. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, watching us here um, live, uh, coming to you straight from Parkland Kenyatta University School of Law. Remember to keep sending in your comments and questions that you may have on the topic of the day and we'll respond to those at the end of uh, the third segment. Uh, stay tuned. is here for you. Visit www.orbitalglobal.com. Orbital Global, connecting families, uniting nations. Last but not least, we are now going to 
put the creamy vegetable the same same way you can always get creative this one is going to come on top Align this on the side. And today we feature Matas Security and Fleet Management. Our first prototype had some issues. Uh, the heat and the friction in, on the Buda Buda uh, really uh, killed our hardware. <laughs> We decided to make our thing really modular and create accessories so that can be able to to help you in such situations. So the first thing that we, we created was a panic button. This button here is uh, the, the, the modular part. It used to connect. It used to connect like the panic button and any other modular features that you may wish to want. Okay, welcome back. Um, as you know, Kenyatta University School of Law has a duty, we think, uh, of community service. And we do this through our legal aid clinic and now coming to you live via television on KUTV. Today we are talking constitutional law and we are with, uh, still with our expert, Ms. Catherine, who is uh, very articulate in telling us about this. And we were talking steps uh, toward um, uh, participation through forum, for example, mm. uh, and you mentioned, you know, awareness creation and then pick from there and help me understand this. Okay, all right. So apart from creating awareness where you give information to the public concerning a particular issue of concern, mm -hmm. um, you also have to involve them. Now, mostly we involve the stakeholders. And by stakeholders, mm -hmm. I mean you. Um, in the sense that you are affected yes. at the end of the day by whatever it is that is happening, mm -hmm. be it matters education, be it matters regulation in a particular sector. Yes. So you are the stakeholders, you are the consumers um, of these laws that we make. So apart from creating awareness, we have involvement. Um, other than that, we now go and contact the public mm -hmm. in the sense that after we get the views from the stakeholders, yes. um, it could be in particular sectors, um, then we involve the public, we inform mm -hmm. them when the meetings are supposed to take place, mm. um, we inform them of what is expected of them, yes. and then lastly we now hold the meetings mm. or the forums where we now get to interact um, with the public by asking questions, by allowing them to comment on particular issues, and um, be it in the form of complaints or mm. concerns, um, because that is what public participation is all about. So we are mm. not limited um, in the sense of who is supposed to partake of this exercise. It's each one of us um, in one way or the other, either directly mm. or indirectly. And then uh, I guess um, the viewer should be hearing that those mm. people we elect to represent us, mm. shouldn't they be the one <laughs> <laughs> making this uh, public participation? Mm -hmm. steps you know actually mm -hmm. work for us isn't it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's true um, the members of parliament or uh, members of county assemblies those who are campaigning as mm -hmm. we speak yes. are supposed to let you know um, apart from what they are going to do for you how you can either give give feedback in mm -hmm. the sense of mm -hmm. this is what was supposed to happen what happened what is being um, set out in the sense of where are we where are we headed? Is there a vision for mm. us as members of that constituency? Is there a mission for us as the members of that ward? Any concerns that we have, are they being addressed and to what extent? Mm. So again, the members that we elect, remember, we are exercising <laughs> our sovereign power 
indirectly. So again, part of public participation is questioning what has been done in the sense that whatever we aired as concerns, where are we so far? So that there is progress, so that we see progress as a society and not shy back and then leave the work to our representatives. We should be enabling them. Remember, they are our agents. Yes. Yeah, we are the principals, they are our agents. So meaning we are supposed to um, ask questions. Where are we? What are we doing? The same way you would ask your employee. This is the assignment you are given. What have you done with mm. it? Where are we stuck? Are there enough resources? What can be done um, in that sense? So again, feeling like you're part of the process because that is what national values and principles of governance are all about. It's part of inclusiveness, feeling included. Mm. And um, if we felt included, then I'm sure much more would happen even at the county level, be it even matters of security. Yes. Because if you felt you're part of the, of the process, mm. then again you would take a step. But then if you feel it's so far-fetched in the sense that once you elect your representative, that's it, you take a back seat, then we fail in matters public participation. We fail ourselves. And in fact, we are not supposed to blame the government mm -hmm. at any one point, mm -hmm. yeah, because it is part of us. They are part of us. We are the ones who elect them. Yes. So they are actually working for us. I, th I think I can conclude the way, the way you just put it, that yes. if you are not doing it, if mm -hmm. you are not doing public participation mm -hmm. in what I am now reading is a kind of auditing of the people we employed True. to go and do this or manage um, mm. this kind of uh, participation for us. Mm. Uh, we are failing to abide by the Constitution, and <laughs> so we are mandated to do that by the Constitution. True. And one can, I guess, uh, see probably the way representative work is not to invite this auditing from us mm -hmm. so that we don't see where they're failing. Would you agree? Um, to some extent. Yes. Um, in the sense that um, I believe it's about being vigilant. As much as we elect them, we are supposed to be vigilant. They cannot mm, come yeah. back to us and demand vigilance. Yes. So I think it's up to us through public participation to be vigilant about our rights. Once we sleep on them, they are gone. Mm, yes. and I, I think you put it well. It's a duty. Yes. Yeah, don't just yes. sit there. Yeah? Yes, don't just sit there. <laughs> okay, now, um, so then, mm -hmm. I think uh, that segues into the other question I wanted to ask. So what are the challenges as far as you know, because of this, uh, being mm -hmm. a specialist in constitutional law, mm -hmm. uh, that you know, comes in between public participation mm -hmm. and the happening of it? Mm. In fact, it's a good opportunity to talk about the challenges um, that come with public participation because mm -hmm. we are yet to get there um, in the sense of understanding our authority, in the sense of understanding our participation mm -hmm. in matters governance. Yes. So what we should do is um, clear out whatever doubt we have in the sense of the functioning of the government because I believe um, most of um, Kenyans have this negative mm -hmm. notion mm -hmm. that why should I participate, what will I change um, mm -hmm. as one individual and again you fail to understand that one vote is your voice mm -hmm. as much as you might believe it has no effect if we all we if all of us decided to sit with our votes, yes. then how would we communicate what we want? So it's a collective responsibility. It's you and I yes. who constitute mm. um, uh, that government who make sure that there is public participation. So again, those are the challenges: the negative mentality and the attitude. Mm. Another issue is illiteracy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an issue of concern yeah. in that most of uh, uh, the information that is set out in the public is for the literate. Mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yes. So again we need a forum where you can translate, uh, for example because again it's part of promoting diversity. Mm -hmm. yes. What if we translated, what if we used sign language mm -hmm. um, to cater to persons with um, living with disabilities. So again, these are some of the challenges we face. Um, another challenge we face is resources. Because mm -hmm. even organizing for public participation itself is not yes. an easy task um, in the sense that you have to advertise. Yes. Um, and that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And more so if you're advertising to um, the, the whole republic, it mm -hmm. requires um, resources. So in that sense, then um, it hinders 
at times um, the public participation. Say, for example, for a particular sector, mm. they will speak more to the people in that sector mm. as opposed to yeah. the rest of the country yes. in that um, at least they get to save costs. So that is an issue um, that faces or one of the challenges that would face um, matters public participation. In this country, we know of um, money exchanging hands, mm. you know, corruption. Mm. Uh, your mm. call to an important public participation <laughs> meeting. Unalipo. Uh, True. Unalipo. <laughs> how, how big is that? True. In your um, yes. Now, unfortunately, as Kenyans, we believe, you know, um, we are not going there for free. Yeah. So, and when most people ask, are yeah. we paid? Are we getting paid? Yeah. Uh, why should I leave my, my workplace and come to participate? Are we being paid? However, mm. little, we are concerned whether we are being paid or not. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's part of our duty. Mm -hmm. I know it's part of our duty. We are not supposed to be paid. Um, in fact, they are supposed to, um, yes. to get paid by us mm. in the sense of creating a forum where we can go and express our views. Um, so that is also another issue um, and a challenge. Yes. And that's why most people don't go for public participation. Um, and in fact, that reminds me, mm -hmm. um, sometimes the forums that are created yes. can fall on a weekday mm. in the sense that um, most people are Working. So unfortunately, they cannot leave their workplace and go and um, uh, get, be engaged in uh, public uh, forums or even public barazas. Yes. So again, this is um, uh, a problem that um, I believe can be fixed in the sense of having structural ways in which we can uh, create um, a public uh, participation or a system that mm. can enable us to uh, be involved in that um, system. Do you think that um, maybe the, the history and the legacy created mm. in this country, mm. the foreignness, if I were to put it that way, the citizen, the common person in the street mm. feels mm. when presented with things that are government, you know, mm. it's like government, yes. big G yes. over there, yes. and uh, here, here mm. I am. Mm. And one of those things that probably persists is um, people not even attending assemblies. Like, like county assembly. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. in primary school, I stayed, and this is a long time ago, mm -hmm. we were being told that you can just walk into parliament and mm -hmm. listen in. Mm -hmm. Do, <laughs> does the public know that they can actually just walk in and listen in? Yes, um, unfortunately not everyone. Yes. Um, the good thing with schools, they inform um, their students yes. concerning the same. And also there's the issue with uh, COVID-19 that now um, we sort of pulled back. Mm -hmm. But then as you can see, even from um, KBC, yes. um, in the sense that we, uh, we get broadcasted um, uh, proceedings of parliament in that we are still involved. Mm -hmm. um, and those of us who would want to be involved, you don't have to travel. Yeah, you can sit at home and um, listen to the proceedings. So again, um, that is what public participation entails. And also, the common wananchi not feeling excluded mm. um, in the sense that they are not so far from governance. In fact, yes. they are the authority, mm. as we have seen under Article 1 on sovereignty of the people. So if they understood that they have the authority, not just to cast that vote, yes. but to follow through um, decisions, to be part of making laws, because that is also part of... Um, public participation. Yes. And I like that you mentioned county assemblies. Uh, members of county assemblies that we get to vote represent us at the county level in making laws. And part of the process of making laws is ensuring that we get views from the public. So we are not so far. Right from your village mm. to your ward, through to the sub-county, you're part of the process. Yes. Now, uh, and I, one can imagine if you are in communications mm. like I am, mm. that uh, presentation of that information that one needs um, is key yes. to, to facilitating this participation. Mm. Would you say now we are much better because we have many media platforms since the digitization of media in this country? Yes, in fact, we have no excuse um, in the sense of participating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have social media, and in fact, it's the fastest and the easiest way um, to communicate. We saw this um, with uh, the BBI, where you got it um, in your WhatsApp. Mm, yeah. It was as accessible as that. Yes. So again, um, and also freedom of the media is protected under the Constitution, mm -hmm. and um, this is something we get to enjoy. Uh, freedom of expression. Um, 
is also another right that we get to enjoy, that we can use and also feel part of the process. Now, I'm glad you, I wanted to highlight that because mm. uh, people sometimes think, oh, we, we don't have the resources mm. uh, and, you know, resources for presenting that information are sure. there. Sure. Well, law matters is mm. doing exactly that. Yes. I think that's one of our objectives to yes. do that. Yes. But now, mm. let's uh, track back on to talking about devolution because mm. the devolvement of power mm. is where, mm. uh, I guess, you know, this facilitation of participation by the public when sure. government is near where they live mm. happens. Mm. So what are the objects and, um, um, the, of mm. the devolution as mm. it is stated in the Constitution? Mm. Very yeah. well. Um, devolution which has been elaborately provided for us under Chapter 11 begins by informing us the objects or the functions or mm -hmm. why we have devolution in mm. the first place. Yes. Now, the first object is promoting democratic and accountable exercise of power, mm -hmm. meaning we are democratically involved. In fact, if you look back at the definition of democracy, it means mm -hmm. a, a government made up of the people, mm. by the people, and for the people. Yes. It means it's for us. The government that we form is for us, and mm. it is made up of us. So we should not feel so far away. Um, accountability is also another national value mm -hmm. that has to be there. Um, yes. Seeing that uh, you have mentioned issues of corruption, so again, um, Article 10 deals with issues of accountability as mm. much as Article 174 that defines the object of devolution mm. gives us that we can promote democracy and accountability of exercise of power. Another object is that devolution fosters um, unity. And how does it do this? It encourages, uh, encourages us to appreciate our diversity in the sense that for the various counties we have in this country, 47 of them, mm -hmm. they all represent a certain um, way of living. And we see this especially in public holidays where they are celebrated in different counties mm -hmm. and we get to explore what that county is about. So that is what devolution is all about. And in fact, I love that now um, that we have students traveling across the country um, for school. It's part of um, promoting diversity. So again, devolution um, enables us um, to access yeah, mm. um, a way in which we can foster national unity. Another way or another object of devolution yes. is the protection of the minorities and the marginalized in the society. Mm. Um, the marginalized is you and I, um, in the sense that if you look at the definition of who the marginalized are, under Article 100, you have women, you have the youth, you have the elderly in society, and of course, um, uh, children. So mm. again, if you look at those issues, in one way or another, they affect you. Mm. So devolution made it easier for protection of minorities as well as the marginalized. It also allowed us to have what we call um, power to self-govern, mm. in the sense that if you look at various counties, right from the governor, yes. you get to elect a person who is from your area, who understands your area, that mm. member of county assembly. Yeah. So it means you have been given the power to self-govern by being um, part of the process and also making sure that at least through decentralization services are closer to us, be it health, be it education, whatever it is we need is now a bit closer to us than what we had in the past. Another very important object that we must not forget yes. is that devolution allows us to have what we call systems of checks and balances. Mm. What do we mean by that? That these three arms of government, be it at the national level or mm. at the county level, yes. can check on each other. Remember, if power goes unchecked, yes. it, will it will be abused. And therefore, mm. through public participation, through the complaints that you make, the petitions, the memorandum, the public forums that you have, you now have that opportunity to check on whatever it is that is happening. So you will find that even the Constitution itself has given us various methods that um, each arm of government can use to check on the other. Mm, very good. Yes. Um, I like that you know <laughs> your Constitution. <laughs> yes. Now, mm. as provided in the Constitution, are all the counties the same? 
Unfortunately, they are not. Yes. Um, as much as we would want to all be equal, um, it would only exist in a perfect world. Yes. Um, so cons um, counties have been divided into ones that fall under rural. Mm -hmm. There are those that have a combined way of doing things where mm -hmm. we have both urban and rural. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the cities. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the sense that if you look at, for example, Nairobi, um, Kisumu, Mombasa, and the most recent one, uh, which is Nakuru, Nakuru yes. um, you find that at least with that, then we are able to be closer in the sense mm -hmm. that as much as we are different, yeah, the rural counties, there is something they offer in mm -hmm. the sense of even agriculture. If you look at the urban um, uh, counties um, and even cities, that is where we grow economically. Mm. If you look at even one of the objects of devolution, yeah. is social and economic growth. So how we do that is allowing mm. for um, diversity and appreciating that as much as we are different um, mm. in whatever resources that mm. we have, there is something we offer. Mm. We can also look at um, a difference in the terms of geographical regions. Yes. As much as we would want to be the same, um, geographically, it's not we possible. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I think we maybe can summarize that in our third segment as yes. um, we enter it. Yes. Um, very good. Keep your thoughts um, like that flowing. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back, we'll finish that thought. Mm -hmm. um, we wish to take a break uh, right here. Remember, keep interacting with us on the topic of the day. Make your comments or send in your questions uh, that you may have and we'll answer them in the third segment. Keep it low market. Last but not the least, we are now going to put the creamy vegetable. The same, same way. You can always get creative. This one is going to come on top. Align this on the side. And today, we feature Matas Security and Fleet Management. Our first prototype had some issues. Uh, the heat and the friction in, on the Buda Buda uh, really uh, killed our hardware. <laughs> we decided to make our thing really modular and create accessories so that we can be able to, to help you in such situations. So the first thing that we, we created was a panic button. This button here is uh, the, the, the modular part. It used to connect. It used to connect like the panic button and any other modular features that you may wish to want. and those at home <laughs> so I can see you smiling in my mind <laughs> so we were talking about the differences between the counties um, that are uh, provided in the Constitution so highlight just two key uh, differences how they are distinguishable mm -hmm. from each other 
Yes, so one way is the population mm -hmm. uh, because again um, uh, population grows and that's why we even carry out a census to mm. get to know how many people live in a particular county. So uh, then again population affects resource allocation. Mm, so yes. if you're talking about matters equality, even in distribution of resources at the county level, it has to um, be reflective of mm. the needs in that society, be reflective of how many people are we catering to yes. in that particular um, county and that is why public participation is important so that mm. we get to know what are your struggles, what are you concerned um, about. So in that sense, when we are making the budget, then we know who to allocate what based on what concerns they mm. have, based on the population, based on their needs. So if you want to access those services in your county, get mm. involved. Ah, very Please. good. Well, I think well said because sometimes you forget when our town grew mm. and became not True. not a market True. and then not a municipality True. and now as it ends we're still having the same uh, budgetary allocations to yes. take care of our needs yeah. so i think now the public knows mm. the you couldn't have said it better yeah. how important public participation in these matters and mm -hmm. uh, because they are provided in the constitution i think uh, now going into the elections, I think we know, are sure. thinking differently yes. about how you've put it, the agents we send there and mm. how they make us get involved. Yes. Uh, I like that. Very interesting um, discussion about the grand document, yeah. as I like to yeah. talk about it. Mm. Uh, at this time, uh, Ms. Irumbi, we, we want to invite some questions from uh, the audience. Mm at home and um, our studio audience as well. Mm -hmm. As is our tradition, we'll start with our studio audience and um, I can see a question right there at the back. Okay, pose your question. Please. Okay, so thank you. I'm Maria Flynn and uh, the question I have for our expert today is, uh, when I want to propose a law or an amendment as a citizen, where do I go and what is the process? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Mm -hmm. So laws are made both at the county level and at the national level. So mostly and the best way to go through it is at the county level. Yes. Where you can even go through um, the petition route and more importantly a memorandum where you state briefly mm -hmm. what the issues are. And then these are made into policies. They are coined and, um, uh, and that's where we get the draft bill. Yes. And through the draft bill we are now able able to table that bill in parliament and now how that is how laws are made so it is not complicated in fact the good thing is that now the information is out there for the public as i have told you the uh, county government toolkit provides for even a template that you can use where you need to petition where you need to have that memorandum um, well structured then you can go through that route and I guess uh, here, the, what to, one important thing to highlight, because maybe there's a misconception, mm -hmm. uh, and it's related to that question of amendment. Amendment meaning changing. Mm -hmm. There's an assumption or even a provision that uh, the Constitution can be changed, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. It, it is true. So uh, I think the viewers should know that, uh, you know, we should fight, okay, don't change the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I think it can, it's a provision for amendment if yes. things change, true? Yes, yes. In fact, um, Chapter 16 of our Constitution provides for the amendment of the Constitution. Um, in fact, change is good. We say change is as good as a rest. Mm -hmm. So, again, um, the most important document in the sense of the most supreme law um, in this nation can be amended. Um, uh, though there are procedures that have to be strictly followed yes. because, as we can see, the constitution is a reflection we say it's a mirror of the society so we also have to be careful mm -hmm. even in the alterations and the amendments that we make and uh, i guess there are those uh, grand things that we can't change but uh, others can be amended yeah? mm -hmm. okay. um, now everything can be amended mm -hmm. um, however um, the procedure for the amendment is what is of concern mm -hmm. because we have what we call parliamentary initiative where the members we elect, if you recall the indirect exercise of democracy, yes. the members we elect are the ones who are mm -hmm. able to amend. However, we have what we call a referendum, mm -hmm. and that is where we are all involved. So there are areas of the Constitution that cannot be amended without us. Mm -hmm. One is supremacy of the Constitution, 
the territory of Kenya, yes. the Bill of Rights, um, the functions of Parliament, mm -hmm. the functions of the Office of the President. Why? Because all these matters that are listed for us under Article 255 are paramount mm. in the functioning of our government. So before anything changes, remember we are the principal. We have to be informed. Yes, I know what we'll do. We will have to invite you once again so that you talk about some of these other areas that yes. we cannot be able to talk today. Mm -hmm. So we have another question in the back there. Pose your question, please. and supremacy of the Constitution, mm -hmm. and it seems that both of them are competing for that superior principle. So which one uh, normally should take precedence mm -hmm. over the other, and also how do they relate to each other? How mm -hmm. do they work in harmony to promote the constitutionalism? Mm -hmm. Very good question, Juma. Mm -hmm. Now, with reference to chapter one of the Constitution that embodies those two great principles, mm -hmm. sovereignty of the people and supremacy of the Constitution, they work hand in hand because we cannot exercise our sovereignty without the authority of the supremacy of the constitution. Why? Because um, supremacy of the constitution talks about um, uh, the constitution binding all persons as well as state organs. So it means if we are ever to exercise our sovereignty, that all state organs and all persons must adhere to the same rule. Because if we were to adhere to different rules and morality, then of course we would be operating in chaos. So supremacy of the Constitution ensures that we are uh, referring to the same document and that the same document binds us all. Okay. I think that one is quite well answered. Another question? Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you so much. <coughs> I'm Baraza Joseph, and I will want to pose the following question to the expert today. Uh, she has really underscored the vital role public participation plays, and consequently, a, a, a bill or an act can be invalidated because of lack of public participation. So if such a scenario presents itself, what's the next step, what's next for, for us, the people, and the parliament itself? Mm -hmm. Very good right. question. So it means if the process was flawed, in the sense that there was no public participation, all is not lost. We can go back again and table the document and of course follow through public participation. Okay. Very nice, precise, short. <laughs> <laughs> one more question, we'll tackle one more question. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Kimani Njanga, and my question is, um, if I want to give my views during the public participation process, mm -hmm. particularly when a certain law is being made, mm -hmm. where do I go to? Mm -hmm. And in, in, in the same vein, who exactly is mandated to give public participation? Is it everyone involved during the process? Is it every other citizen? Mm -hmm. Or are there key stakeholders that should give their views mm -hmm. with regards to the subject matter mm -hmm. of the law that is being legislated upon? Mm -hmm. Very good question. So we do not have to all be involved. Uh, more so in the sense that if you feel that that issue affects you as a stakeholder or if you're working in a particular sector, if that issue affects you, more often than not you're going to get communication um, in the sense that if there are any laws to be drafted concerning that particular issue, say for example, let me just use aviation law. So if for example you own an aeroplane or you know um, uh, something related to that or you have a company so it means by the time they're enacting any laws affecting your sector you should be informed um, and this is done um, most times through emails um, through circulars um, so again it's not everyone because again certain issues would not affect the public as a whole um, seeing that various statutes are coined specifically for certain sectors Yes, I guess uh, people shouldn't be saying, well, they didn't talk to me, so there's no public <laughs> participation. True, true. Actually, the country, the country is large. Eh? True. Uh, no, we can have representatives. I think we have time for one more question. Can you? Yeah, go on. 
My name is Amy Aching, mm -hmm. and the question that I would like to pose to Ms. Rumbi is, uh, what qualifies as adequate public participation? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Now, mm. this question was asked uh, yes. when we had the case of Reverend Timothy Njoya, mm. and um, it laid down very clearly yes. um, how we can sort of gauge um, the level of public participation. Yeah. One is through civic education. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we have to go through what we call constituent assembly. If you look at civic education, and um, before I even go to uh, constituent assembly, civic education is part of public participation because we cannot participate if we don't know what we are participating in. Mm. So for us to gauge whether the public was informed, we have to gauge the level of education mm. that was done in the sense of circulars, in the sense of people speaking to the public. So again, through constituent assembly, because that's another way, we have our representatives in the sense that we see parliamentary proceedings every other day where they are debating. It is part of public participation in that they represent us. We also have what we call a referendum. Now, a referendum is the best way, and especially mm. when it comes to constitutional law matters, where a question is posed for us as the public, we are informed um, uh, of matters that are supposed to change, and then we go back to the ballot and decide whether we want that issue changed or not. Mm, very, you heard it there. I think our representatives who, whom we are going to elect should know Yes. <laughs> what's in ahead of them yes. if we all participated and did our duty and mm -hmm. um, you know due diligence in terms yes. of knowing how we should be governed how we should be represented mm -hmm. um, thank you very much mm -hmm. for all that good information yes. we also want to thank all the uh, viewers participating from home I'm getting a lot of feedback that is, that is positive mm -hmm. they like you uh, oh, in terms you. of <laughs> your ability to articulate those matters of concern about this document which is a very important document for all of us mm. and sometimes we neglect it mm. um, so I also want to thank our live studio audience who are always vibrant and ready to pose questions and uh, listening keenly mm. our crew that makes this show possible every Tuesday uh, we thank you for that and we cannot forget our sponsors uh, the Green Grant Fund for coming on board and the Kenyatta University School of Law for all your goodies, including this set where we sit. Uh, I think we will invite you one more time. I'm happy and to. And we can that. expand on the Constitution. And thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. With that, we want to wind up and uh, we'll see you next week, uh, same time on Tuesday at 7 30 p.m. Keep it uh, Law Matters. Interact with us on our social media platforms. Goodbye. Do get the girl. <laughs> it's a life.